and welcome to my totally fabulous Art Attack Christmas video. We've got loads of fantastic things to make and do that will make this Christmas especially amazing. And if you've just unwrapped this on Christmas morning, don't worry, because it's packed full of things that'll be just as much fun adapted for other celebrations like birthdays. But to get you in the Christmas mood, what's better at this time of year than loads and loads of snow? Yeah, there's plenty of snow here. Tell you what, though, it's freezing. Thank you. All right, all I need to do now is find somewhere to make my snowman. Thank you. Let's see. Right. Yes, now, somewhere to make a snowman. Cool. It's much prettier than the studio, isn't it? <laughs> Mind you, there's probably too many trees to make a big snowman. Ah, I know. Yes, now, there must be somewhere down there I can make a snowman. Let's go and have a look. Aye, aye, look at this lot. <laughs> they seem to be having fun. Mind you, I'm not surprised because, after all, we are in Seefeld in Austria. Now, this is a famous place for the Winter Olympics and there's all sorts of winter sports here. Sports for the old fogies. <laughs> and sports for the young fogies. Mind you, I have to say, I'll tell you what my favourite sport is. Sleigh riding. So, OK, somewhere to build a snowman. <sighs> well, it's very beautiful here, but there's probably still too many trees. OK. Let's go back up the mountain, then. Ah, now this is better. Look down there. See? Just down there. The perfect place. Right, then. All I need now is lots of nice, fluffy snow to make my snowman. And here it is. There we go. Oh, oh, oh I'll tell you what. Oh, it's not as easy as it looks, you know. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 I give up. Well, so much for my snowman. Tell you what, let's try some snowballs. Tell you what I'm going to do, team. I'm going to invite you all to pelt me with snowballs. Watch this. <laughs> ah, rubbish. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Pathetic. And why? It's the wrong type of snow. You see, to make snowmen and snowballs, the snow has to be all compact and quite wet. This is very powdery and dry snow. No good for snowmen. Hmm. So, I've got the perfect place, I've got lots of snow, but it's not the right type. So how am I going to build my snowman? Ah, I know how I can build a snowman.
Wasn't that amazing? Now, I don't know whether we'll have a white Christmas this year, but if not, here's a snowman you can make without snow and a couple of other amazing decorations to go with it. Now, to make the snowman, start with his base. Take a big piece of card, around about the size of a big cereal box, cut it into a square and then trim it into an irregular shape around the edges so you have an irregular shaped base for your snowman. For his body, take a two litre plastic drinks bottle, take the top off and then tape it to the base. Now, I'm gonna do it very quickly, and very roughly to show you, but you can take a lot more time and tape it really securely to that base. Oh, you could glue it, I suppose. And when it's in position, take a double page spread of newspaper and crunch it up lengthways. Not too tightly though, because what we want to do is wrap it around the top of the bottle, just under the shoulder, and then tape it into position, and this will give your snowman a nice chunky chest, give him a bit of shape. And to give him even more shape, take some more double-page sheets of newspaper, fold them up like that, and then roll them the other way, this time into a tight roll, and just tape them to the top of your bottle, but whatever you do, don't cover the top up, and keep that bottom end flapping freely like that. Then take another roll of newspaper and do exactly the same. Just tape it to the top of your bottle and continue to go all the way around the bottle, taping rolls of newspaper, and eventually you'll get back to the beginning. There it is, and you'll have something that looks like that. And you'll need about 12 rolls altogether. And it's very important that you don't go over that top hole. You just leave it free and you leave the bottom free and flapping. Then take whoop, a plastic bag or a bin liner and just pull it over the whole thing like that. Right down to the bottom and take a piece of string and wrap that around the bottom. You can feel all those rolls of newspaper inside and just pull the string in like that and then knot it in position. Now you can do this with an elastic band if you can get one over the top or even a bit of tape and you're just pulling it into shape and there you've got a nice curved shape for your snowman, a bit like an upside down broken vase. Then just pop a hole in the top of the bottle, right through the bag, there like that, and then for his head, just put some newspaper into a plastic bag or bin liner, scrunch the newspaper in. Now the bag needs to, needs to make a ball that's around about the same width as his body, and then just knot the bag and this excess plastic you just stuff down inside the top of the bottle like that, pushing it down with your finger as it goes. Try to get as much of it in as you can and then press the head down and just tape that securely into place. Again, just one bit of tape on the side there. I don't think you could glue this, I think you'd need to tape this. So another bit on the other side there like that. And there's his head and his body and his base. Now, for his arms, just roll up some sausages of newspaper, nice thick sausages like that, and they need to be around about half the length of the body, and just press them on, put some double-sided tape on there, you can tape them into position, and for his feet, you need to just roll up some nice chunky sausages and place them at the bottom, on the base, and then one again on the other side, like that, and you can see he's starting to take shape. For his nose, just scrunch up another sausage of newspaper, but make it nice and pointed at one end. You could even tape it into a point, and that'll be his carrot nose. And if you want to make a hat for your snowman, just cut out a circle of card. You can draw around a saucer, and just take a paper cup or polystyrene cup, place that on top, tape it into position. Again, I've got some double-sided tape there, and then just crunch the hat down like that to make it nice and wonky, and just roll up some newspaper, and stuff that in, again, just to give you the shape. Just pull that bit off there. It doesn't matter if it starts to break up, it all adds to the crazy effect. And then just put some tape on there to keep it together, and tape it onto the top of his head, a bit double-sided there, and on he goes. And just put it to a wonky angle to make him look really crazy. And there he is. And now to cover him in snow. Nah, not real snow. PVA glue, two parts glue, one part water. Mix it with a bit of water and just slop the glue onto your snowman. Cover his chest, his face, his nose, his hat, 
even the base in PVA glue and then just pop, pop on strips of kitchen roll. Now kitchen roll is nice and strong. I suppose you could use loo roll or tissue paper, but let's use kitchen roll for this. Make it nice and strong. Cover the whole snowman in two layers of kitchen roll and glue. And then leave it to dry overnight. And when he's dry, watch this. You'll have something that looks like that. Look at that. The snow or the kitchen roll and PVA glue has gone nice and hard. And see what I've done here? I've even rolled up some kitchen roll and made these little buttons for the front, stuck those on, and I've given him little bubbly cheeks just to give a 3D effect. Now, even if you used white kitchen roll, it's a good idea to coat the whole thing in poster paint or acrylic paint, bright white, to make it nice and snow white. And then you can put on your detail. I'm just going to draw in an eye here to show you with black permanent marker. There it is. Quite difficult to get it on to start with, probably because my pen's running out, but not to worry. And if you make a mistake at this stage, you can always just paint it over with poster paint or acrylic paint again. In goes his eye. Now for his nose, again, I'm just going to use some paint here, make it nice, bright and orange, I think, because after all, snowmen do have carrot noses. You can, again, take a lot more time to do this, do it more carefully. And when you've done all your detail on your snowman, you'll have something, oh, there he is, Something that looks like that. I thought he'd run away then. Look at that. And you see what I've done here? I've painted his buttons black. We've even got some tinsel for a scarf. And I've dabbed some blue on there for his cheeks to make him look frosty and cold. And I've given him some tinsel hair. And I've painted his hat black. And I've just dabbed on some glue and given him some glitter snow. And there he is, a snowman that never melts. So... You don't have to keep him out in the cold. Try it yourself, your very own Christmas snowman. You know, Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without a Christmas tree in your bedroom. Come and have a look at this. Now, to make a homemade Christmas tree, you need to cut two big sheets of card from a cardboard box. Now, you can make this as big as you like or as small as you like. I'm going to do a big one. Draw a vertical line down the middle of each sheet of card and then simply draw a Christmas tree shape onto each piece of card. Now, you just have to keep it really simple because this is just going to be the sort of skeleton, if you like, of your Christmas tree. I'm just drawing a big triangular shape like this onto both sheets of card, and then don't forget your pot. Now, a couple of little tips here. You must make that vertical line go right down the middle of your tree and down the middle of your pot, and also make sure the bottom of your pot is straight, so you can use a ruler for that. And then mark the halfway point up your Christmas tree, like that, I'm just guessing, but you should measure it, because it does have to be accurate. And do the same on your other one. Draw that onto your piece of card, and mark the halfway point like that, and then Cut yourself a strip of card with a straight edge. Now watch this, this is very important. Place your strip of card on its side, going up the vertical line on one of your trees, and go up to that middle point. So that's up to the middle point on one, and draw a slot like that, the width of the card. And then on your other one, draw that slot so that it goes down from the top of your tree to that middle point. So again, you've got another slot, but this time from the top of the tree to the middle. So it's one from the top and one from the bottom. So you have something that looks like that. Then cut both trees out, including the slots, and you'll end up with something that looks like this. Look at that. Two trees, two slots, one top and one bottom. And then paint your pot. Now, if you paint your pot in a nice bright red colour, like this, you can use poster paint or acrylic paint, it gives it a real good Christmassy feel. And do that on both sides of each tree. And then, a little trick here, if you just paint on with PVA glue some little star shapes all over your pots, I'm just going to do it really quickly here to show you. And you don't have to do a neat star, it can just be a series of crosses like that. And I bet you know what I'm going to do now. Yes, just get a pinch of glitter, sprinkle it onto the glue, like that, and then just shake off 
the excess like this and watch this. Voila! You've got a star. Do that all over your pots and you'll have stars all over your pots. Looking like that. Look at that. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? And then just simply slot the two trees together like that. And there you have, well, it's a sort of skeleton Christmas tree, isn't it? It's a slot Christmas tree. And now to fatten it up. Very easy to do this. Scrunch up a sheet of newspaper into a ball. Take some sticky tape, attach it to your paper ball, and now this is what I call Christmas stuffing. You stuff it onto your tree. There you go, nice paper ball there. Stuff it right in to the corner, like that. And then take some more newspaper, make some more balls, put some tape on, and stuff them in. And it's just a case of building up the shape of your tree by stuffing in some scrap newspaper and taping it into place. And when it's finished, you'll have something that looks like this. Look at that, a nice, fatly stuffed Christmas tree. And you've got a lovely Christmas tree shape there. And I've even put some extra sticky tape on just to hold it all into place. And now to put on the leaves or the green colour, take a pack of crepe paper or tissue paper that's green. Now I'm using crepe paper because it's cheaper and just lightly crunch it this time, not into a ball, and then take some PVA glue, just the ordinary white school glue you get in the squidgy bottles, and then just dab some onto the bottom of your tree, like that. It's best to start at the bottom rim here, and just dab it into place, and then stick on your crepe paper. And just, again, apply a bit of Christmas stuffing there, and there it is. And look at that, it just hangs like a leaf in place. Cover the whole of your tree in the same way, and when it's finished, look at this. You'll have your own homemade Christmas tree. Look at that, and there they are. All your leaves beautifully stuffed into place, and you've got this fantastic shape with your pot at the bottom. And now to decorate it, the difficult bit. Take a metre of sticky tape, and I get really annoyed when I do this. Watch this. Try and fold your tape over into a loop and then just scrunch it into a loose ball. And it's not easy, sometimes get into a right angle. <laughs> and then just pinch a bit of the sticky part of your ball of tape and then stick it into some glitter. Just dip it into the glitter, holding on to a sticky bit and then pull out the glitter, shake off the excess, and then just attach it to your tree using the sticky bit that you've been holding on to. There it is. You just literally stuff it on again. And you can make loads of different shapes, loads of different colours. Look at that. I'm going to use red glitter there, because I like using red and gold just to match my base. And again, another one on there. And you can put as many as you like on your tree, and when you've decorated the whole of your tree, you will have something that looks like this. Look at that. Gold and red glitter balls decorating the tree. Brilliant, isn't it? Try it yourself, a homemade Christmas tree for your own bedroom. You noticed how at this time of year everything's really Christmassy. The shops, the decorations, presents. But have you ever wondered, what is it that actually makes things look Christmassy? Is it snow? Is it sleigh bells? Or could it be this stuff, holly. You know, it's amazing. You can draw holly onto nearly anything at all and make it look Christmassy. Now watch this. I've got an ordinary cheap envelope and I'm going to turn it into a Christmassy envelope just by drawing on some holly. Now if you've ever taken a close look at holly, or indeed if you've ever held holly in your hand, you'll know that it's got spiky leaves. Now they're really deep green leaves but they've got spikes on them. So when you're drawing your holly leaf, it's just a case of drawing a load of spikes along the edge. And it's a bit like drawing ocean waves, like that. Look at that. Ocean wave there, and one upside down, and there you have your holly shape. And again, colour it in this really deep green. You know, it's amazing how many things to do with Christmas are green and red. Well, maybe that's got something to do with holly. Because again, if you take a close look at the holly, you'll notice, as well as those spiky leaves, it's got those really deep red berries. So I'll just put those on to my picture there. And then I'm just going to outline the whole thing 
You don't have to do this, but if I outline it in a very thin black line, then it makes it look even spikier. I don't know whether you've ever held holly, but it can be quite unpleasant. So when you do see it at Christmas, steer clear of it. It's half sharp. I'm just going to go around those berries, black outline, and put a line down the middle of the leaves, and there it is. And if I do the same in the opposite diagonal corner, two corners, and there I've transformed an ordinary cheap envelope into a really expensive looking Christmassy envelope. And you could try this. Take an ordinary piece of white card or thick paper, cut a rectangle, fold it in half and make some place cards for your Christmas dinner table by writing your guests' names on the front and just creating a border of holly around the outside. And look at that, I forgot to colour that one in there so I'll just finish that off and again I did the holly in exactly the same way. I mustn't forget those bright red berries. There it is, and I think that looks like a brilliant place card for the Christmas dinner table. And you know, you can draw holly onto anything. It's best to draw green leaves and red berries, but if you've got something that's really strongly coloured, or it's already coloured green, and you want to do holly leaves on it, then try these gold and silver pens. And again, they give a really great Christmassy effect. Just draw in the holly leaf in the same way, and the holly leaves don't need to be neat. Just draw these upside down and right side up ocean waves, couple of berries, and there you have it. And again, that gives a really good Christmassy effect. Now, have you ever seen these things? These are brilliant. These are glitter and glue pens, and it's just a case of squeezing the pen, and the glue and the glitter come out at exactly the same time. And it's absolutely perfect for creating really spiky holly. See that? Just squeezing it out at the same time and when it dries it gives it a really good glittery Christmassy effect. And what I've done here is I've threaded some ribbon through a piece of card and I'm just going to create a Christmas gift tag. In fact there are lots of different things you can do with holly. Look at this lot. I've created some gift wrap just by drawing holly onto some pieces of paper. I've cut out some thin card, thin green card, into holly shapes. And you can do your place cards. You could even decorate some crackers and make them look really Christmassy. Try it yourself and have a holly Christmas. Yeah, I just love Christmas decorations. But you know, my best thing is making my own cards. It's really easy to get a great effect. Just have a look at some of these. Take a piece of thin card, any colour you like but a plain colour, and then fold it in half to create a Christmas card shape, and then cut another piece of card slightly smaller than the front of that first card, and if you can, get a different colour. And then take that piece of card and draw a circle on it. Draw a circle in the middle, and the idea is to draw your Christmas card design on that circle. Now, you're going to be doing a fat Christmas card, so do a design of something that's fat. And at this time of year, what's fat? Father Christmas. Use the circle for his tummy. So I'm just going to do the detail of his tummy onto that circle. And you can do other fat Christmassy things, such as a robin, maybe a snowman, maybe even a Christmas pud. But the idea is to just make it nice and fat and plump and round. And once you've put the fat bit in, put the rest of the detail around your circle. Uh, just do his beard and his moustache and his jolly round face. Again, nice and plump. And his little cartoony eyes in there. Just keep it really simple, nothing too detailed. <laughs> Just put a nice chubby hand in here with all the fluffy white bits around. It's quite easy to draw Santa, isn't it, really?
and once you've done that, cut out the middle bit, just the bit that's in the circle. And the best way to do that is to pop a sharp pencil through it like that to get your scissors in. And cut that circle out so that you have something that looks like that. And don't worry about ruining that middle bit because you won't need it in the end, but just put it to one side for the time being. Then take a piece of thin drawing paper and soften it up by crunching it up and opening it out. And the idea is to make it very soft by creasing it loads of times. Now, you won't believe it, but I've been doing this one all day. And look at that, it's really nice and soft now. It's got loads of creases in it. And then put this on the back of your card. And this piece of thin paper needs to be just a bit smaller than your card. And the idea is to line it up on the back and just press the middle through the middle of your card. See that, the way it's going through? And when you're happy with that, turn it over and tape it into place. Now, I'm just going to tape it really quickly to show you. You can put loads of tape on and make it nice and secure. And then stuff it with scraps of paper or newspaper balls, and they're going in the back. And when you're happy with that, see that? Nice stuffing there, so it's nice and fat. Just tape all of that stuffing into place on the back, just to make it secure. And then put some glue, nice strong glue, around the back, a couple of dabs in the corner. Now, it looks a bit of a mess at the moment. But don't worry, because if you bring the other card back in, pop that into place, and then just position this very carefully over the card, and then press it into place. And all that glue squelching down, and his tummy is squelching out. And then put it to one side to dry. And when it's dry, you just bring that circle that you cut out back in, and then copy the detail from the circle onto your nice, fat tummy. And it doesn't have to be perfect or anything at this stage because we're going to be painting it in a minute. And you just press very lightly with your pen. You don't want to go through the paper. And just put in all of that detail. Like that. And when you've done that, colour it in. Use felt-tip pens, paint, crayons, whatever you want. And this is mine. Look at that. I've used poster paint for that. There's this nice fat tummy, I've even painted that as well. And I've gone around all the detail with some black pen and I've done a border around the edge just to finish it off. And there it is, a fat Christmas card. And you can do any Christmassy design you like, as long as it's fat, plump and round. Oh, and there is one other thing. Make sure you do your card so it stands up this way, not that way. Otherwise, it'll fall over because it's too fat. <laughs> Try it yourself, a fat Christmas card. How about this? A Christmas card that you don't even have to open to see what's on the inside. You just look through the window. Look at that. Brilliant effect, isn't it? Just take a nice big piece of thin card or thick paper, a nice Christmassy colour like red or green, fold it in half to make a very simple card. And then take one of these see-through margarine lids. Now, I don't know whether you've ever noticed, but on these see-through margarine lids, you've got this lip that runs around the outside that's much wider than this raised rim. Now, the idea is I want to draw around that raised rim. So, just place it in the middle of your card, Turn it over with the rim on the bottom and then just slip your pencil underneath the lip and draw around the rim. Just doing it very carefully. You have to be quite accurate with this and quite neat. I'm just going around in pencil. So there we are. And you've got something that looks like that. And the idea is to cut this area out. Now, if you're cutting cardboard, you might need to pop your pencil through first to get you started. Cut it out as neatly as you can and you'll have something that looks like that. And that is the start of your window. And then cut out a picture of a Christmassy scene from a magazine, or you could use one of last year's Christmas cards, and just cut it to fit the inside of your card, and just glue it into place so that you can see it through the gap in the window. And then take a piece of Christmas wrapping up paper, something that's got a really good pattern on it, and draw around the bottom of your card onto the Christmas wrapping up paper and cut it out so that you have a shape that fits the bottom of your card perfectly, like that. 
and then take a different coloured piece of Christmas wrapping up paper, something like that this time, and then using your see-through margarine lid as a guide for the window, place that in the middle and just draw a set of curtains around it. So I'm just using a felt tip pen here to draw a pelmet on the top and then two nice fat curtains down the side. It's very important that you use two different coloured pieces of Christmas wrapping up paper. So there they go, curtains down the side like that. And then you cut those curtains out and you have something that looks like that. There it is. And then bring your card back in and the idea is to stick that bottom piece of Christmas wrapping up paper onto the bottom of the card to make it look like wallpaper and the curtains wrapping up paper on the top like that in position to make it look like curtains. And when you've done that, you've got something that looks like this. And look at that. What I've done here is I've even created some Christmas decorations in felt tip pen and just coloured them in with paint and I've gone around all the detail here with black permanent marker just to make it stand out and looks really bold and striking. And then design your window. Again, take your see-through margarine lid and put it face down and then take a black permanent marker. Best to do it with permanent marker because it goes on very easily onto your margarine lid. Now I'm going to do those lattice design windows, you know the sort of crisscross design, I think they look really Christmassy. You can use a ruler to do this if you want, I'm just going to do it very carefully here. I like doing things freehand though, I think they look a lot more, well, freehand really. There we are, there's your windows in and then you could take a silver pen and you could just put little bits of snow where the snow is collected in these lattice windows. You used to see these lattice windows on the old-fashioned shops. Not that I remember the old-fashioned shops, of course. And then you could always put some snowflakes in, like that, and a bit of snow that's collected on the back. Now, you must also go around your window frame with your black permanent marker, and it's quite difficult to dig it in to all those nooks and crannies. I've tried there to get it right in, and from the front, it looks quite neat. But you could always use black acrylic paint for that if you can't get your pen in. And when it's finished, you do it all neatly, and it looks like that. And then you just put on some dabs of glue around the edge of that lip. Just put a couple of little dabs on to show you. Just do it very quickly. Just dab it on the old PVA glue. It's the best glue to use for this. I think it's the best glue to use for everything. Very versatile. I love it myself, PVA glue. Just the ordinary school glue. Get in the white squidgy bottles. And then bring your card back in and open it out like that and pop the window in from the back and it should be a perfect fit. In it goes from the back, sort of popping it in from the back of the front if you get my meaning and just press it into position there like that very carefully and you could write a nice Christmas message on the inside as well and there it is. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. And if you haven't got any Christmas wrapping up paper, you could always do your own design on the front of your card and colour it in with poster paint or even your felt tip pens. Try it yourself. A Christmas card that you can see through. Brilliant, aren't they? And if you change the design just a bit, they can work just as well for birthdays and other occasions like the perfect thank you card. <laughs> Dear Gran, thank you for the great Art Attack video. Love, Neil. <laughs> Brilliant. Gran will love that. Well, that's nearly it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And to sign off, here's the biggest, most spectacular picture I've ever done. Have a fantastic Christmas, and I'll see you in the new year. Ta-ra! Oh, and enjoy the biggest art attack yet. It all started when I brought the Art Attack team to New York recently to make an Art Attack big picture. Well, here I am, Christmas in New York. And it's amazing. This place is huge. In New York, everything is huge. The buildings are enough to make you dizzy. The cars are massive. And the street numbers, look at that. And Christmas is everywhere. And these have just got to be the biggest Christmas tree decorations you've ever seen. And only in New York would they wrap up an entire building like a Christmas present. And listen to this, there's music everywhere on the streets. 
and the windows are fantastic. Everything is big. Attention. Of course, while I was in New York, I just had to do some Christmas shopping. And where better to start than a famous toy store? And look at this, the biggest Christmas wreath in the whole world. And what does the B stand for? Big! You know, while I'm doing some Christmas shopping in one of the biggest and best stores in the whole world, I've got to do it, haven't I? I've got to go and visit the big man himself, Father Christmas. There's one of his helpers there. I think he's through here, through the Crystal Cave. Look at this, look, it's beautiful. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. <laughs> ah, he's through here. Santa's Grotto. Huh. But little did I know, I was about to get one Christmas surprise I hadn't bargained for. Hey, I don't believe that. Santa is off feeding the reindeer? It's Christmas. I'm in New York and there's no Santa. There's only one thing for it. A big heart attack. By now, it was dark and I had to figure out what to use to make my big heart attack out of. So I had to look around. New York by night is fantastic. A real fantasy land. There are lights everywhere. I knew I had to make something really special, but I just couldn't think what to do. There's got to be something somewhere in New York that I can make a big picture with. That's it. It's down there. It was at that moment I had the idea. It's obvious. Well, it was obvious to me. So then I had to find exactly the right spot to do my big art attack. So the very next day, I set about finding it. I walked the streets of New York. I knew exactly what I was looking for because this art attack had to be really special. This was going to be the biggest picture I've ever done. But could I find the place to do it? No, nope, not right. So I tried somewhere else. I wonder what it's like the other side. Let's find out. So I tried the other side of the river. And it was there I found the place with the perfect view. This is it. This is it. This is perfect. Yes. Right. I've found the right location. Now I've got to do some planning. That's it. I think this is going to work. Look at this. This is the picture I'm going to try and do. And where am I going to do it? Over there. So I was almost in business. I had my picture, I had the place to do it, but then I had to set up a lot of appointments because one of my biggest problems was getting permission to do the big art attack. So I had to make a formal request in writing to the top man in New York, the mayor. I delivered my letter first thing next morning and then all I had to do was sit and wait for his call. Hello? Yeah, put him through. Hi. Brilliant. Thank you for... Will you thank him for me? Excellent. Cheers. The mayor said yes. We're on. But I also knew I was going to need help from the people behind the power of New York. So I arranged to meet the head of the electricity company to discuss the plan. Hey, Joe. 
So, okay, Joe, how much of New York's power is actually generated here in this pen? This is a 44 megawatt station. And what's the total? About 9,000. Okay, now, you may think I'm nuts, but I need to access the system. I need to get right inside and take some of it out. Is that possible? How much? Probably all of it to start with. As long as we don't cause any blackouts or no one loses power. Can I, um, can I sure. lean on here? Sure, let's see what right? you have. Okay, Joe, this is the plan. What I want to do is to turn this area here to a reindeer's leg. Reindeer's leg over here. I think Joe thought I was slightly mad, so I had to convince him that the whole plan would work. Eventually, he came round to my way of thinking, but we weren't home and dry yet. We're going to have to be careful. That could cause a dip in the network. Is it achievable, though? We can do it. Let's do it. So, all we got to do now is wait for it to get a little bit darker and the right moment. And so we waited and waited and waited. As darkness started to fall over New York, slowly the lights in the buildings came on. And so the Art Attack team set up for the big moment. Excellent. E right, OK. Brilliant, fantastic. OK, thank you. We're on! Hey, hey! I've just had a call from the electricity board and we could be on in about an hour. Excellent. Just time for one final briefing. I don't, I don't think that leg will show. I don't think you'll show. Oh, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, 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 hang on. Hello. Yeah, hi, Joe, yeah. Yeah, we're freezing. Oh, brilliant. Well, uh, yeah, I think it's the big moment too. Are we ready? All right, I'll tell you, what, tell you what I want you to do, Joe. Um, I want you to take the lights out, and I'm going to count to five, and then bring them back on, OK? Are you ready? Are we ready? Here we go. Keep going. Keep going. Look at that. Look at that. There we go. Oh, OK, here we go. Here we go. Right, this is it. OK, Joe, in five, four, three, two... One! Go on, Joe. Go on, Joe. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. Go on, Joe! Yeah! I'm just going to say Happy Christmas from New York. Happy Christmas!